Coming in at number 10, we have what is dark matter? There are several mysteries that the universe has brought us, like how did the universe start? What is at the center of the universe? And how is every dog a good boy? Another one on that list is what on earth is dark matter? Here's the thing, we can't even see dark matter. We just kinda know it's there. How does that work? Well, we see it interact with other things even though we can't see it. Now, how does that work? Well, I have no idea and we're getting a little too deep into the science for me. But what I do know is that dark matter is supposed to make up more than 85% of all matter in the universe. Well, since there's so much of this stuff floating around in the universe, why is it so hard to find? This is like trying to find a good movie in the DC Entertainment Universe. Well, Shazam was pretty good. But back to my point. The reason that dark matter is hard to detect is because it doesn't interact with the electromagnetic field. Or at least, that's what people assume. Coming in at number 9, we have Cryptos. So I will admit there is one person who can solve this mystery, but if they did, it would kind of take the fun out of it. Cryptos is one of the most famous codes in the world. It's a massive art piece that was created back in 1988 by artist Jim Sanborn. It looks like a giant scroll and on it are four sections that have massive cryptograph puzzles on them. Three out of the four riddles have been solved, but the fourth has yet to be cracked. There have been a few hints given by Jim himself. He said that the answer from the other three passages have clues as to what the answer is for the fourth. Also, he has revealed some of the words as Berlin, clock, and northeast, and still, people haven't been able to get to the bottom of what this thing means. I mean, come on guys, the dude's giving you full words. I'm sure he'll lay it all out before he dies or has the answer written down somewhere in case he passes in an accident, but unless he tells the world or some genius is able to break it down, we may never know what it means. Coming in at number 8, we have Who is Anonymous? A group of global hackers who unveil some of the dirty secrets that are going on behind the scenes. Who are they? Well, we will probably never know. For those of you who don't know, Anonymous popped up back in 2003, and at first it was mostly just them trolling the Church of Scientology. But since then, Anonymous has become one of the most powerful social movements. Whenever there's a serious political event, you can bet that Anonymous will show up to leak some pretty serious information. They have been widespread supporters of WikiLeaks, and most recently, they were seen during the George Floyd protests. It's hard to tell which claims of Anonymous are real, since anyone with a V for Vendetta mask could claim to be them. But I wouldn't want to be on their bad side, because it would seem there is no database that they can't get it into. They have leaked information connected to the police, military services, and even the former president, Donald Trump. Coming in at number 7, we have Deciphering the Voynich Manuscripts. If you haven't heard of the Voynich Manuscripts, well, let me take you down a creepy rabbit hole that will leave you scratching your head and probably a little afraid to fall asleep. The exact date that the manuscript was written is unknown, but it's thought that it would have been created somewhere in the 15th century based on the type of paper it was written on. The origin is also unknown, because it was written in a language that has never been seen before, but it's thought that this thing could have come from Italy. But the language or code that is used as text in this manuscript has never been deciphered. Even though historians have been trying to figure out what's going on with this book since the 90s, there are illustrations of flora in the book, so it's thought that it could be some record of alchemy or potions. And of course, because it's written in an unknown language, people think it could be the work of the devil. In the end, the whole thing could just be a joke or a bunch of gibberish that some madman wrote down in his spare time. People could be working tired to crack a code that means nothing, or it could be the greatest work of dark magic on the planet. I wouldn't worry about it though because we're probably going to be long gone before someone ever figures this out. Coming in at number 6, we have the Steppe Geoglyphs. History has left us with so many mysteries that it's hard to keep up with them all. Whether we're talking pyramids, Mayan temples, or is Atlantis a real place? All of these things have us questioning reality. Well, throw the Steppe Geoglyphs on the list because they are a head scratcher. They were discovered back in 2007 by researchers who were trying to find some sort of ancient pyramid system in Kazakhstan. And what they found was just as bizarre. Markings left on the earth that span for hundreds of miles and come in all sorts of strange shapes. Some of them are large arcing lines and others look kind of like symbols that we would recognize today. The oldest of them was over 8 
thousand years old. The answer as to why they are there or which group of people made them is still a mystery. It's thought that some of the markings could have been left to track the sun and the stars, as many other civilizations have done similar things. But there still isn't enough information to confirm that, so we're going to jump straight to the most logical answer, which is aliens did it. That's the one that everyone likes to use to explain anything old and weird. Coming in at number five, we have the lost city of Atlantis. Was this a real place? Was it the most technologically advanced place in the world? Does Aquaman live there and rule with an iron claw? There are some people who swear that Atlantis is a real place that succumbed to some sort of natural disaster and might hold the greatest treasure on the planet. There are other people who think that it's all just made up. And then there's a third group of people who just want to hang out with mermaids. Coming in number four, we have how did they ruin Game of Thrones? Just a warning, there is definitely going to be some spoilers in this point, so if you don't want to see it, skip to number three. Okay, here's a fun one, but how on earth did the most popular show on TV, a show that had people clamoring all over it, and was the cornerstone of our culture, just fizzle out into nothing like it almost never existed? Now there are some ideas as to how this could have happened. There are rumors that the directors rushed the final season, that HBO told them that they could take as much time as they wanted, but they got an offer from Disney to work on Star Wars so they sped through the final season so they can move on to something bigger. Later, the final season of Game of Thrones was so disastrous that they lost the Disney deal. There were just so many unanswered questions. Why did Arya never use her superpowers? How did a dragon get killed so easily? Why did Euron Greyjoy always pop up in the right place at the right time? Why does Jon Snow never fight one on one with the Night King? What was Bran doing in the whole final showdown fight? Right now, we have no explanation for any of this. Coming in at number three, we have the Copper Scroll Treasure. A lost treasure is always a great way to get people interested in a mystery. You're telling me there's an untold amount of money somewhere, and it could be all mine with a little bit of luck and a lot of digging? Well, kind of. The treasure of the Copper Scroll was first revealed back in the year 1952. It was part of a great archaeological find in a series of caves next to the Dead Sea. The Copper Scroll is literally a massive piece of copper that is writing engraved into it. Man, to think there was a time when copper was less valuable than paper, so you'd write down all your information in a giant piece of metal. The Copper Scroll talks about a treasure of gold and silver so large that most people think it's a lie. The size of the treasure would maybe be the largest gold and silver reserve in the world. Now, there is some backing to this. At the time that the scroll was written, there was a Roman force that was controlling the area. The people didn't like this, and they were waging war against the Romans. Now, because of this, there could have been several wealthy people who didn't want their goods to fall into the wrong hands and decided that they would pool their resources to keep their moolah in the same place and safe. But the question still stands, if the treasure is real, where is it? Coming in at number two, we have the Ghost Boats of Japan. Now this sounds like some sort of urban legend, but I will tell you that this is a very real thing, and it's one of the creepiest stories I've heard in recent years. The Ghost Boats of Japan have been washing up on the shores of northeastern Japan, and no one knows who sent them. They have all been wooden ships with no one on them. Well, no one alive has been on them. Every boat that makes contact with the shore has bodies in it. Sometimes it's just body parts, like a series of skulls were found on one boat. Other times it's a few bodies laid on top of each other, and the numbers vary every year. One year, 80 bodies were found in mysterious wooden boats that washed up on Japanese shores. Now, even though the exact breakdown on why this is happening is still a mystery, there have been some clues that have popped up along the way. One of the biggest is that there was some Korean writing on board of one of the ships, and a torn piece of the North Korean flag. So it would be a good guess that North Korea is doing this. Why they would be sending ghost boats with dead bodies in them out into the water? Well, we still can't answer that. And coming at the number one spot we have, is Jesus real? For the amount of people who pray to this dude and call him the son of God, there is zero evidence that he actually walked the earth. Obviously, there's a lot of people who think that he did, but there's also a lot of people who think the Browns are going to win the Super Bowl every year. There are several things about Jesus being real that have been disproven. There were people trying to say that they discovered the house that Jesus grew up in, but carbon dating disproved that as the time frames didn't add 
add up. The house was constructed way after Jesus' time. There are a lot of people that think the teachings of Jesus aren't from a real person, but were put down on paper as a way to guide people to be kind to one another. Similar to the way that tales from pretty much every other culture in the world were not real, but are highlighted as a lesson. There's also a very interesting documentary about a man who was researching all of the scriptures about Jesus, and he thinks that the symbol for Jesus in the Bible was actually a symbol for mushrooms, like magic mushrooms, saying that taking mushrooms was the key to enlightenment and a religious experience. That I can get behind. Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the Beale Ciphers. This is an old American tale that seems too good to be true, but it still has people trying to hunt down this mysterious treasure to get rich. The Beale Ciphers were made in the 1920s in Virginia. Now, they were a secret that was passed to an innkeeper, or so the legend goes. They were apparently written by a man named Thomas J. Beale. That's obviously where the name comes from. Now, when Thomas gave these ciphers to the innkeeper, it wasn't some challenge to see if the innkeeper had the skills to unearth the riches. No, he said he was going to come back to get the papers from the dude, but then he disappeared, and that was the last time anyone saw him. So, the innkeeper sat on these papers for 23 years before he had to crack them open to see what was inside. Turns out it was a bunch of codes that the innkeeper couldn't crack. Before he died, he passed those codes off to another man who was able to crack one of the three codes. This code broke down what was actually in the treasure, which was apparently $43 million worth of gold and silver, and that's $43 million in today's currency. Now apparently the other two codes tell you who the treasure belongs to and where the treasure actually is. So one of those codes is absolutely useless. I'll tell you, if I crack that code, that treasure belongs to me. Also, there's a good chance that either Beale went back to get the treasure himself and didn't tell the innkeeper because the ciphers would have been useless if he moved the treasure, or there could have been someone else who cracked the code and has already been there to take the treasure and didn't tell anyone. Like, if I cracked that code, the last thing I would do would be blab about it. I would be real quiet about it. I would take my treasure and then I would flip it into cash and no one would be the wiser. Coming in at number 9, we have WT1190F. That sounds like a code you put in to have unlimited ammo in one of the Doom games, but this is a much more interesting find. WT1190F was some space debris that had people all over the world confused about what was going on. People at NASA, as well as several other space agencies around the world, could not figure out what the hell that was or where it came from. And when we're talking about the massive void known as space, it would seem that it really could have come from anywhere. The debris eventually entered the atmosphere and burned up upon entry, so whatever it is, it's gone now. The suspicion is that it could have been something released from a spacecraft, but then the question becomes, which one? And guys, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. Coming in at number 8, we have the Bay of Jars. We know that Europeans did not come to Brazil until the 1500s, and it's thought that those were the first people to cross the ocean to touch this new continent. That was until 200 Roman jars were found on a beach in Brazil. Treasure hunter Robert Marks was exploring Gunabara Bay in Brazil to see if he could come up with any goods. Well, he would find more than some gold coins or a treasure map. He would unearth 200 Roman jars that might change the Brazilian history. This was back in 1982, and soon after the discovery, the bay was closed to stop thieves from coming through and stealing these priceless artifacts. Since then, no one has been able to find out how these jars got there. As far as we know, the Romans never crossed the ocean to make contact with the Americas, but maybe one ship was brave enough to make the journey and ended up docked in Brazil with a ton of goods and no one to trade with. There's also the possibility that these were brought over by colonizing Europeans who wanted to sneak away to the new world with a treasure that could change their life. There are suspicions that the Brazilian government isn't interested in finding out why these jars are there because it would shift the narrative of Brazilian history and they are happy with things the way that they are. Coming in at number 7, we have Jack the Ripper. We have talked about Jack the Ripper many times on this channel before. This was the man responsible for terrorizing the streets of London back in 1888. He had the whole city on edge because people thought at any moment they could be descended upon by a man in a black 
coat would slice them up like a Thanksgiving turkey. This all started when there was a series of women who all turned up dead in the streets. They all died in similar ways. There were slash marks through their throat from ear to ear and all of them had been dissected with some of their organs removed. Now the term serial killer wasn't even coined yet so the idea that someone was going around and simply dismembering people for some sort of sick amusement was shocking to the public. And because these victims were all prostitutes it made Scotland Yard think that these could have been crimes of passion. Then the police force would receive a letter entitled from hell. This would be the first contact from the brutal killer who would call himself Jack the Ripper. The gruesome letter talked about his killings and also was taunting the police. Even at this point the men at Scotland Yard were hard pressed to try and find a way to connect this back to a single person. For all they knew this letter was sent from the newspaper so they could drum up a little business. But then they got one more letter that had a human kidney with it. I think Jack wanted them to know that he wasn't messing around. To this day we still have no idea who he is. Coming at number 6 we have the disappearance of Angela Hammond. One of the many missing person cases that has never been solved. Angela Hammond was talking on a payphone with her boyfriend back in 1990. She screamed at the top of her lungs right after she described a green pickup truck that had pulled up next to her. Her boyfriend sped off to where she said she was and saw the pickup truck. He slammed his car into reverse but then he blew the transmission and the truck got away. No one ever found out who took Angela Hammond. Coming in at number 5 we have the sleeping sickness pandemic. As many of you know COVID-19 isn't the first time that we've had a pandemic sweep across the world. There have been plenty before the one we are currently dealing with. But one you might not have heard of was encephalitis lethargica which passed through most of Europe back in 1916. It was a strange illness that doctors never found out how to treat or how people were controlled. It. it had a fatality rate of 33% and even if you were one of the lucky ones who could make it through this mysterious sleeping spell you might never be the same again as it's thought it would cause long lasting brain damage. Basically it would start with someone getting very tired like they have mono. This would progressively get worse until they felt like they could no longer work and needed to stay in bed. Eventually they would fall asleep and drift into a coma. Some people would never wake up from said coma. The last case of this was in the 1930s. But we still have no idea what the sickness was or where it came from or how to treat it. I'm sure if it came around today we would have the tech to solve this problem but this is still very much a creepy one. Coming in at number 4 we have the dancing plague. Might as well stack one pandemic on top of another one get them all out of the way so we can have smooth sailing from here on out. The dancing plague was back in 1518 and it started with just one lady who was busting it down and some more people jumped in until there were over 400 hundred people dancing around. This sounds like what's going to happen in the streets as soon as all the coronavirus bans are lifted. Well the rumor is the dancing lasted four weeks and some people danced to death. Now there isn't any hard evidence to prove that people died from dancing but people definitely did dance for weeks. Some of the suggested reasons why? Psychedelic mushrooms. Spores were released into the airs. Everyone started tripping and they had to bust a move. Coming in at number three we have clear Cleopatra's tomb. One of the most famous rulers in history was buried with the one she loved, Mark Anthony. Not the singer, you guys can get all those jokes out of your system now. But is JLo the reincarnation of Cleopatra? Probably. Back to history. Cleopatra was apparently buried somewhere near the temple of Isis as people loved her as much as they respected the Egyptian god. Now outside of her tomb being a great archaeological find because we know how much old dudes love finding dead bodies wrapped in toilet paper, there is something much more valuable than a queen that has been dead for over 2,000 years. Apparently the tomb is filled with gold and jewels. Now there is a chance that this tomb has already been raided and there won't be anything worthwhile in it but if it's still intact cracking this thing open would make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. But if you're pulling this one off everyone around you might want a piece of the pie unless you have the skills to dig up the tomb on your own. So you might have to pull off a Scooby Doo thing where you pretend to be a fake monster 
so you can scare everyone off and get the riches to yourself. Coming in at number two, we have what's going on in the ocean. This is one of the biggest mysteries on the planet. We know more about the surface of the moon than we do about what's going on below in the ocean. I mean, we have explored a good amount of it, but there's still so much we don't know. And we are kind of destroying that environment, so if we don't start looking into it soon, we might lose it forever and never get those answers. And if there are evil mermaids down there, they might be gearing up to go to war with us for all the things we've been doing to the ocean. And coming at the number one spot is quantum entanglement. Now, I want to start off this point by saying that I am too stupid to know what this is. I think I have an idea of what it is and that's why I'm putting it on this list, but if I get this very wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments. Now, quantum entanglement is how a particle can be affected by another particle that is nowhere near it. Now, why is this strange? Because what we understand as physics is that two particles that aren't close to each other shouldn't be able to affect one another, and if they could, they would have some means of communication that is faster than the speed of light, which is also thought to be impossible. Now, scientists have witnessed this happen, but they have no explanation as to why it's happening. So this breaks the laws of physics, and we don't know why. Coming in at number 10, we have antimatter. One of the mysteries of the scientific world. I'm sure anyone who has read a sci-fi novel or watched enough Star Trek has heard the word antimatter. Well, what is it? That much we actually do know. It's the mirror image of an atom. It has the complete opposite charge. It would be like if you met your bizarro version of yourself. But now get this. What if when you met your bizarro self, the mirror energy of you two touching each other caused you both to disintegrate? Yeah, that doesn't sound very fun. Antimatter and normal matter destroy each other. So we definitely don't want to head to a parallel universe that is all antimatter. We would vanish faster than a hot dog in front of Joey Chestnut. Of the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. It's been, it's been something else to get this off the ground. Now, the mystery here is a few things. Where does antimatter come from? Well, that we don't really know yet. There's a few theories, but nobody knows for sure. Another question is, how do we make it? And you're probably wondering, why would we want to make something like that? Well, because when matter and antimatter come in contact, they produce energy, and we could potentially harness that energy for future fuel. Coming in at number nine are the human statues. So at the start of the 1900s, there was this condition that started going around in Europe that had everyone perplexed. It was dubbed encephalitis lethargica, or EL, and it spread around the world pretty quickly in epidemic-like fashion. Kind of hits close to home, doesn't it? But weirdly enough, I'd say what we're going through is still a lot better than what they went through. People who got it would essentially become frozen. Their minds would be fully aware and active, but their bodies just couldn't move. So imagine being awake during a coma, that's what it was like. The disease attacks your brain and will result in a headache, high fever, catatonia, sleep inversion, delayed physical and mental responses, and so on. Of the 5 million people who got it, a third died while half the survivors became statues. They could barely talk or move their eyes and would just be motionless still for days, weeks, or even years on end. These people never even went back to how they used to be. The exact cause of the disease is still unknown till this day. Doctors have theorized it could be brain inflammation caused by a really rare type of streptococcus that mutated. Guys, you don't even want to know how many takes that took for me to say. <laughs> the whole thing is weird. It vanished as quickly as it came with no new cases until the 50s. Where day to come from? Where day to go? Where day to come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Coming in at number eight, we have Where's Jimmy Hoffa's Body? Jimmy Hoffa was one of the most influential men in American history. He rounded up many of the labor workers in America who weren't protected by their employers and he started up the Teamsters Union. This was one of the first major steps in bringing unions into the working class people of America. This gave the American workforce power over their employers like they had never seen before, and Hoffa was at the head of this power. And as they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. There's a lot of speculation on when this started, but Hoffa started working with organized crime. Now, he might have been working with them from the jump, or not until he got into power, but as his rise continued, he started to make moves that weren't in the best interest of the mob, and they saw this as a major insult. Hoffa was taken out, and his body was dumped somewhere, but nobody knows. This has been a mystery since the 70s, and I doubt we'll ever get to the bottom of this. The famous mob hitman, the Iceman, made claims that he was the one who took out Hoffa, but he might have just wanted a last feather in his cap, as this was something he said right before he was sent to execution. Philip 
Following our number 7 slot is Paula Jean Weldon. So back in the 40s, Paula was a student at Bennington College in Vermont and was just a regular girl next door. You know, she was sociable, smart, had a part time job, liked hiking. Look at me, I just made her Tinder bio for her. <laughs> no, don't joke about the dead, Amen. Sorry. Now one day she decided to walk a portion of the long trail which was a few miles away from her campus. She finished her shift at work, went, and she didn't pack any extra clothes or money. She didn't even take a bag since it was just a hike. People just assumed she'd come back in a few hours. Paula went with a friend half the way and then hitchhiked the rest and when she got there a group of hikers recalled running into her and Paula asking them some questions. She was on the trail late in the afternoon so darkness was approaching ASAP Rocky and the hours passed, something happened out there because Paula never came back to her dorm. Her roommate assumed she was just at the library, but after she hadn't returned by the next morning, she notified college administrators. The search began and started on campus, and then eventually spread to Long Trail, and the college was even closed for a few days, and hundreds of volunteers helped search. Even air searches found nothing. But the weirdest part of this whole case was when her dad heard about her disappearance, he bizarrely disappeared himself for 36 hours. Apparently, Paula's family life was troubled and his weird behaviour made him a prime suspect. People assumed Paula had gotten lost and died on the trail but a waitress in Massachusetts claimed she had served an agitated woman that matched Paula's description. Fifteen years later, a lumberjack said he had followed Paula into the woods and knew where her body was and then admitted he was joking. Learn what humour is mate, that's not a good joke. Her body was never found and her disappearance never solved. Coming in at number 6 we have the Havana Sonic Attack. Do you think world governments are working on some secret devices to mess with people? Well that might be what happened here. For this story we need to shoot back to the year 2016 and go over to the American Embassy in Havana. If you were working over there you would expect the entire experience to be sunbathing and drinking mojitos until you have to be carried back to your room by the pool boy. But instead 26 Americans and 13 Canadians had to go to the hospital because they all started feeling unwell and none of this had anything to do with being hung over. All of them had the same symptoms, which were all centered around hearing problems, nausea, nosebleeds, vomiting, and a whole bunch of other issues with the head. At first, no one knew what the hell was going on, and then people started to speculate that this was the Russians testing out some sort of sonic disruptor device that messed everyone up because many people said they heard a high pitched noise before they started coming down with the sickness. Wow. The reason of this strange happening was never solved. Coming in at number 5 are the lead masked men. In August of 1966, two corpses were found on Vintem Hill in Rio de Janeiro. The bodies were wearing suits, waterproof coats and had lead masks over their eyes. Which is odd, yes we can all agree. Along with their bodies, police found towels, water bottles and a notebook with the instructions that read as follows. 4.30 be at agreed place. 6.30 swallow capsules, after effect protect metals, wait for for mask signal. The men were identified as Manuel Pereira de Cruz and Miguel Jose Viana and after hunting down their families they were told the two men said they were going out to get work supplies but instead boarded a bus and headed straight to Niteroi. The two stopped at a bar in town where the waitress claimed Miguel seemed especially nervous and was constantly checking his watch. No one knows what was in those capsules that both men swallowed and the toxicology report was also inconclusive. The lead masks also made no sense like if they were protecting the men from radiation, that's fine, but what radiation? <laughs> To wear. Coming at number 4 we have what did Jesus look like? This has been debated for a long time. The images of him that we see in most representations don't really make sense to what everyone else looked like in the area. Some people speculate that he could have been black. Other people say that he could have looked more Middle Eastern. There has been some evidence uncovered that point to the town that he might have grown up in and it would be hard to believe that the dude was white. Also does God even have a skin tone or is he just a massive ball of energy? Energy that is completely translucent and all knowing. So who knows? Maybe he takes after his dad, but maybe he takes after his mom. But will we ever get to know what this dude really looked like? Probably not, because we have zero time machines and there was zero photography back then. Now, at number three is Julia Wallace. Now, Julia was a British housewife married to a man named William, and that's all the backstory you need. How British can you get? <laughs> now, on the 19th of January 1931, William went to his chess club for a game with the lads as 
you do, you know, get, having a cheeky chess game with the lads. But when he got there, he was told someone had left a message for him. The message was from a man called Qualtro, and William had no clue who that was, but the message told him to go to 25 Men Love Gardens East. And for some bizarre reason, William listened to this complete stranger's instructions. Like, why would you listen to someone you don't even know, especially when their name is freaking Qualtro? Either way, he went to the address the next day to find out it wasn't a real address after spending an hour trying to find it. Well, no sh William. When he finally got home after walking, thinking he was a complete fool, he found Julia's beaten bloody body lying in their parlour. Shocked and horrified, William didn't know what to do, but he also didn't have enough time to gather himself because he was arrested there and then. It's like the whole thing was very much a setup. Police thought he had left himself a fake message since the call from Qualtro came from a telephone box only a few hundred yards away from his chess club. He was sentenced to death, but thankfully his case was brought up and overturned by the jury. But who on earth was this Qualtro person and why did he kill or she kill Julia? Coming in at number two, we have what was before the Big Bang. So we know that the Big Bang happened, or at least we think we know, because that seems to be the most logical answer as to how the universe was created. Either that or we're all just sitting in a petri dish right now and some dude is looking at us through a microscope. But let's say that this theory is correct and the universe was born out of a massive cosmic event that blasted out energy so hard it stretched out in every direction. But there had to be something before that. Did time and consciousness just start at that moment and there was nothing before that but what made the Big Bang? The universe is constantly expanding but will it reach a point where it starts to retract and then collapse back onto itself and become so dense it explodes outwards again? Are we going through an endless cycle of destruction and creation? I don't know dude, I'm a host on a top 10 channel. I'm just as confused as you are. I'm actually not confused and I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> And finally, at number one is Susan Powell. So this case has so many plot twists, I was struggling to keep up. So Susan disappeared on the 6th of December back in 2009, and she's still missing or dead, we don't really know. She was married to a man named Joshua, and the couple had two kids together, but they also had plenty of intense marital problems. Susan and the kids went to church on the 6th, and the whole family were reported missing the next day. Police broke into the house expecting to find something, but all they found were two fans blowing a newly cleaned couch dry. Why is it newly cleaned? Cleaning out blood stains there, Joshua? Now he told police he had taken the boys camping while Susan was asleep and had just returned that day to find her randomly missing. Now here's where things just stop adding up. Why the hell would you take your kids camping after midnight during the winter when you're meant to be at work a few hours later? Like it doesn't sound fun for anyone involved. Not only that, but when the couple initially got married, they lived in Joshua's family home, where his dad Stephen grew a huge infatuation with Susan, following her around, recording her, stealing her underwear, etc. It got pretty freaking creepy, I'm not gonna lie to you. She also wrote in her will that her death may not be an accident, even if it looks like one. Who says that other than someone about to get offed by someone they know? When police started investigating, they found no evidence of the camp Joshua described. They found Susan's phone in his van. They found Susan's blood on the floor of the house. And at this point, Josh is looking like the culprit a hundred percent. When police spoke to one of the sons, he said that the camping trip did happen, but their mum had gone with them, but hadn't come back with them. The other son kept drawing pictures of a van at daycare and kept saying mommy was in the trunk of the van. Josh tried to play the whole thing off by saying Susan was having an affair with someone and the two had run off to Brazil to be together, but that turned out to be false. Then Stephen, Joshua's dad, claimed the two had been in love right before she disappeared. Police arrested him after finding a bunch of child and tapes of girls that I didn't know they were being filmed, including Susan herself. Her family were all sure Joshua had something to do with the disappearance, but the case remains unsolved because the body was never found. <laughs>